My name is Elric Stenzinger. I'm the Vice Chair of the Institute of Pathology, and I'm also heading molecular diagnostics at the University Hospital in Heidelberg. The topic that we're going to talk about today is uh, digitalization and obviously artificial intelligence in the world of pathology. And as you all know, pathology becomes more and more uh, digital. That refers to molecular pathology, where this has been the case for a couple of years now. But it is also evident that histopathology or surgical pathology becomes more and more uh, digital when it comes to uh, you know, digital slide scanning and then the use of artificial intelligence. You can think of artificial intelligence as a kind of support tool uh, in the framework of diagnostics. So it serves as a kind of co-pilot where it can you know, support diagnosis, prognosis, and can also enrich uh, mutational profiles. Uh, think about you know, certain genetic events that can, be, um, that can be read out through certain histological features um, which uh, then lead to enrichment of a certain molecular subtype of cases. You can also think about you know, a certain diagnosis where AI serves as a kind of pilot that supports your uh, diagnosis and may be able to flag those cases which are critical and which you have to review a second time. Now, in order to make that work, you need to have a scalable setup meaning that your hardware needs to be in place. You need to have experts handling all of that. And that means that you need to have a critical mass um, with significant investments in shorter and shorter innovation cycles. Now, the future development of artificial intelligence can be broadly conceptualized in two ways. So one point is certainly that there is strength in numbers. You need to have proper training sets which are sufficiently large enough but we also do know that there are problems that cannot be overcome by numbers alone. Uh, and to this end, you need to further development artificial intelligence tools. And we are seeing that on a continuous basis, um, you know, leading to more powerful AI tools out there that will eventually be implemented in clinical practice. When it comes to implementing artificial intelligence in a clinical arena, two things are very important. One aspect is the explainability of AI. And by this, I mean AI that explains how it actually rendered a, the diagnosis or how it came to the conclusion that a certain mutation is prevalent in this specific histological uh, case. The other point I like to mention is generalizability. And that means that the data that have been generated in one data set needs to be transferable to another data set, meaning another institution, for example. And these two, generalizability and explainability, are really key features of artificial intelligence when you want to make this work in a clinical setting. Lastly, I'd like to highlight that whenever you are talking about clinical routine diagnostics, ethical, legal, and regulatory aspects play a key role here. So one is the in vitro diagnostics regulation that ultimately affects you know, labs in the um, EU member states. There is also the question of the error margin that is acceptable um, of any AI tool, you know, meaning, for example, is a 1% error rate acceptable? Is it 3 Is it 4% maybe? What's the human error in comparison? And then there is also the ultimate question, if you sign out a report, regarding liability. There are two examples um, that you can think about when thinking about the implementation of artificial intelligence in a clinical setting. So one is um, we certainly going to see AI as a co-pilot think about uh, you know, gastric biopsies, where most of the times the diagnosis will be a gastritis either type A, B, or C. But there might be, in some instances, cases with cancer. And so AI tools will ultimately guide you in this regard, where they might flag cases where cancer is apparent from an AI perspective, which you would have to double check. And it also would help to uh, diagnose the classic gastritis. 
Another example uh, which we are seeing um, is the question of um, mutations that can be predicted from HE stain slides. There are great examples already out there, and I'm sure that these will help in clinical trials, but maybe even in a routine diagnostic setting to enrich for cases which harbor a certain genetic makeup. A further glimpse towards the future of artificial intelligence and routine diagnostics um, might be a scenario where a model is, you know, composed of various parts that play a role in diagnostics, but are integrated in one setting. For example, clinical data, molecular data, histological data, ultimately leading to a model that allows prediction of response, relapse, for example, or is able um, to infer a prognosis for the patient. Thank you very much. Um, if you want to read more about this, please download the slides at the Core2Ed website.